Earlier we made an adjustment to the contrast of this particular image um, using an adjustment layer in Photoshop. We affected the levels by making the uh, picture a little bit darker uh, as it was slightly underexposed. One of the things with such adjustments in Photoshop is that they apply global changes to the whole of the picture. And that may not necessarily be desirable in a lot of respects. Take for example in this particular picture here. If I go over to my layers palette where I have got my adjustment layer on top of my background layer, I can hit the invisibility um, icon here which is represented by an eye in the palette and see what the image looked like before and after adjustment. Now as you can see all of the image has been affected by uh, this levels adjustment but in fact I think that perhaps my apples I would like them to maybe be a little bit more in the foreground space and thus probably should be a little bit brighter. One of the things about adjustment layers is that they afford us the ability of being able to be selective with, in relation to where the adjustment takes place across the image. At the moment that adjustment to contrast is global but I can erase elements of that adjustment to a certain parts of my picture using the area known as the layer masks which is right beside the, um, the levels icon in the, in the um, layers palette here. Now for using the layer mask you must first of all click on it to make sure that the bounding box is around the edge of it which means that that is now active to be, uh, for, for, for adjustments to take place. I subsequently must go over here to my tune palette and go down to my background color. Now, I should set my background and foreground colors here in this tool palette um, to black and white with black as the foreground. And to do that, if you simply hit the little two squares up here, this will revert the default um, back to black and white. And the little arrow, the curved arrow beside it, if I click on that, I can then alternate between black and white as my foreground color. Black should be selected as my foreground color in this case. Secondly, I need to select my paintbrush from above. Selecting the paintbrush um, uh, from the palette of tools in this area, there are four in total. If I hit the little black arrow at the edge of the icon, you'll see that there are a number of different tools in the uh, paintbrush palette. Uh, if, uh, there we go, we've got the brush tool, the pencil tool, color replacement tool, and the mixer brush tool. Make sure that the brush tool is selected. Then we select the paintbrush um, size, and also its hardness. Now there are two different ways to do this. We can um, select the pixels by doing the slider or we can use keyboard shortcuts which I'll show you in a moment. Again if we adjust the slider, in this case to about 400 pixels more or less, and hold this over the, uh, the picture, we'll see the, an approximate um, size of the paintbrush uh, that we're going to use. 400 is probably fine for the job that I want to do. Underneath that, the hardness relates to, first of all, how soft the edges of the, the painted area will be, or equally how hard. Zero is softness, uh, the maximum softness, and by dragging it up to 100, we get um, a maximum hardness. So, again, if we look at these icons in the, um, the palette here, the one on the left, which has the, the, the soft blurred edge, represents zero hardness, and the one on the right, which is a full solid circle, that represents 100 hardness. But you can vary in between depending on the job that you're doing. For this particular job, I'm going to keep the hardness down at zero hit the return key on the keyboard just to bring me back into the workspace. One of the other things that we'll, we'll be looking at later on will be um, in terms of uh, the adjustments up here will be opacity and but I'm not going to talk about that just yet. For the moment what I intend to do is important to know what you want to do with your image. I want to kind of erase and the, an area of the mask to reveal the brightness of the apples underneath. So in order to do that, what I do is, again, making sure my mask is selected, I then paint over the areas of the apple which have been affected by the, the levels mask. And you'll see immediately that the apples are becoming brighter. Now, it's only the apples that I want to change in this case. If I look over at the mask itself, I'll see that the areas where I have just been painting over have turned black. And what that represents is that the area 
which is black in this mask, has been now eroded to reveal what is directly underneath it, in this case, the background layer. Again, if I check and uncheck the mask, you'll see what I mean. Okay, you'll see that the dark area or the mask has been affected everywhere that's white in the mask and rubbed away the area that is black to reveal what's what's beneath. That is um, one of the beauties of, of layer masks is that you can, as opposed to be married to a global change, you can be selective in the way that masks interact with uh, the various layers in your editing process. Now, going back to what opacity does, in this particular case here, you'll see that maybe the apples are just a little bit too bright, and maybe that somewhere in between um, uh, the high contrast and low contrast might be more appropriate. In this particular case, what I can do is I can change my opacity from 100 back to maybe 50. And now what I can do is maybe bring back some of this mask. If you make a mistake at any point in time in rubbing or era erasing any elements of the mask, you can change it by going back to the background foreground color, changing the black to white. And when you paint back over the area that you had originally masked off, you'll see that it actually paints elements of the mask back in. Now what I am doing here is I'm putting a little bit of darkness back into the particular area that I rubbed out initially. Okay, and you'll see that on my mask here it has gone from black to a kind of grey, which at this point we see equates with about 50% um, of the impact of, of rubbing it out. So I would be quite happy with that. Should you subsequently make mistakes um, with any of the, the masking process, it's very easy in Photoshop to correct it. For example, if I wanted to mask off a particular area here, like so, by maybe like those um, bouquet elements, by maybe erasing them, and at some point in time change my mind, I can make sure that I go back to my palette here, changing the black to white. And again, I'll just bring this back up to 100% at the moment. If I paint back over the area there, it gets rid of the, the mask that I have just made. So the black and the white foreground colors act as one tool, the black, for making a mask, and the white one then for, for repairing it, should you make a mistake. In this particular instance, I would be quite happy with that um, uh, element of the, the layer mask, and uh, I'm going to move on to the next stage at this particular point here. So that's how layer masks work, very, very simple layer mask, um, but there are variations of this technique that you can use in um, other elements of the program later on. Okay, I hope that was clear to you all. I'll talk to you at the next installment.